Hello everyone. Welcome to Study Made Easy, a smart learning for a smartphone generation. Now in this video lecture, I'll be continuing my discussion on kinematics and today I'll be talking about two topics. The first is about concept of point object. I'll talk about concept of point object. And the second thing that I'm going to talk about in this video lecture is about dimensions of motion. I'll talk about dimensions of motion. Right? So let's go ahead and talk about the concept of point object. So what does this concept mean and why do we need it? Now, any object whose size is similar to that of a point is called a point mass or you can call it a point object, right? Now, you know, since the point is a dimensionless quantity, the object which we are treating as a point will also become a dimensionless quantity that means its length breadth and height will coincide now some of you might be saying that why do we actually need to study this concept in kinematics so to understand that let us take an example so that we can have a better understanding let me say that i have a car Let me say I have a car and the length of the car is let me say 5 meters. Right? And its ends are named as A and B. And this car wants to cross this point C which is located at a distance of let me say 1 kilometer from the point B. Now, if I ask you that what was the time when this car crossed the point C, some of you might say that if the point B crosses the point C, that will be the time when the car has crossed. But some of you might say that no, the point A is also here, right? And if this point A crosses the point C, that will be the actual time when the car will cross the point C. So you can see here that the length of the car is becoming a problem for us. We are not able to figure it out then what was the actual time when this car actually crossed the point C. So what we do is that we treat this car as a point, right? We treat it as a point and what happens since a point is a dimensionless quantity, both its A point and its B point will coincide, right? So our problem will something look like this, right? And hence our problem is resolved. Now, the thing is that when do we treat or when do we take into account this concept? Now, if the distance to be traveled by the object is much, much greater than the distance of the object itself, we can treat this car or any object as a point object, right? Now, since the distance to be traveled here is one kilometer, and you know one kilometer is much, much greater then the distance of the object itself, that is 5 meter. So here I can use the concept of point object and calculate the time when this car actually crossed the point C. Right? Now I hope this is easier to you to figure it now. Now let's move ahead and let's discuss dimensions of motion so let's talk about 
dimensions of motion now. We'll be talking about dimensions of motion. Now, motion of an object in a Cartesian coordinate system has three dimensions. The first one is known as one dimensional motion. We have one dimensional motion. The second one is known as two dimensional motion. We have two dimensional motion and the third one is known as three dimensional motion. Now two dimensional motion is also known as motion in a plane. Right? Okay, so let's discuss the one dimensional motion now. So let's talk about one dimensional motion 1d let us draw the Cartesian coordinate first now this is my x-axis and this is my y-axis and let me say that I draw my third axis and let me say this is my z-axis now a particle or an object is said to be in one dimensional motion if with passage of time only one of the three coordinates are changing right so for a one dimensional motion only one coordinate should change right only one coordinate should change now that can be any coordinate that can be either x that can be either y or that can be either z coordinate now let me describe this for you now suppose that i'm standing here at and this denotes my position along x-axis and i'm standing here and after some time what i do is that i'll reach here right and after that i'll reach here now what is happening is that as the time passes my only one coordinate is changing and that is x axis or i can say that is only x coordinate while my both y coordinate and z coordinates are remaining same as i am moving right now this is an example of one dimensional motion now one dimensional example of a one dimensional motion is you can say rectilinear motion or you can say linear motion both are the example of one-dimensional motion. Now, let's talk about two-dimensional motion. Let's talk about two-dimensional motion. Again, let me draw the Cartesian coordinate. Now, this is my x-axis. And this is my y-axis. And let me draw my third axis. And this is my z-axis. Right? Now, if a particle moves in such a way that two coordinates, or I can say two coordinates, are changing simultaneously with time, right? Now, that will be called as a two-dimensional motion. Let me, for instance, say that a particle travels like this, right? Now, what is happening that as the time passes, its x and its y coordinates are changing as you can see here here it had a particular x coordinate and a particular y coordinate now as he moves both its x coordinate has changed and its y coordinate has also changed right so as the time passes both x coordinate and the y coordinates are changing with time now this is an example of a two-dimensional motion now circular motion circular motion is an example of a two-dimensional motion 
or you can say projectile motion in certain case under certain conditions projectile motion is an example of a two-dimensional motion now we'll be discussing projectile motion in later videos now let's move and let's talk about three-dimensional motion now three-dimensional motion now what happens in a three-dimensional motion is all your three coordinates that means your x coordinates and your y coordinate and your z coordinate are changing simultaneously with time right so in other words i can say that my object is actually moving in a space it can move anywhere in the space now this is an example of a three-dimensional motion so in a three-dimensional motion what happens all your x y and your z coordinates change simultaneously with time right the example is simply the motion of a plane right the motion of a plane now it can move anywhere in space and that can we say is an example of a three-dimensional motion now we'll be discussing one-dimensional motion and two-dimensional motion in great detail in our later videos and I'll wrap up this video for today it's enough I think I'll see you in the next video till then take care and study smart